Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Thursday the 4th of June. Well you can follow today's Morning Prayer on the Church of England website but just for a moment I just want this my turn to ramble but I'm going to. Um, is it just me or I thought I had this lockdown caper sussed. Um, but now for various reasons it seems to have got a lot more complicated. Just when I thought I knew the rules, they've changed or it, it's not quite as straightforward as it was. And then there's the matter of other people's interpretation of the rules. Well before we know it we begin to utter, well I, I just don't know what to believe now. Um, but that brings in a, a potential for compromising our senses of confidence and responsibility, not only in our own selves, but in other people also. It becomes hard to be as decisive for fear of getting something wrong. But deep down, of course, we secretly admire the person who demonstrates confidence and follows their own path. Well, today's lectionary led me to reflect further on this, and there's Psalm 146, in particular, verse 2. Put not your trust in princes, nor in any human power, for there is no help in them. And we heard a similar line in Psalm 118 a few days ago. Well, in his play, some of which is set in Kimbolton Castle, of course, Shakespeare has Cardinal Wolsey uttering a depiction of this line in Henry VIII, and that's in Act 3, Scene 2. Um, it's uh, Wolsey, um, that top-ranking civil servant, who has made it to Lord Chancellor of, of England, and he's wielded immense power and influence over Henry. He realises at this point that his power is at an end. He is contrite and realises he of all people as a clergyman should have known better. He rhetorically asks Cromwell, fling away ambition, by that sin fell the angels. How can man then, the image of his maker, hope to win by it? And he answers himself saying, love thyself last. Cherish those hearts that hate thee. Corruption wins not more than honesty. So that all seems straightforward then. Don't put yourself first in anything and we are well on the way to walk in God's way. But God knows how difficult that is. Our second reading from Luke shows us how hard it is. And this must rank as one of the most difficult of the biblical passages to hear, and particularly at this present time. Jesus knows where he is going. He is the confident one with his path. It's mapped out and people want to tag along. But Jesus, in what sounds like an offhand fashion, tells one person that he should probably have to leave his creature comforts and at best virtually end up sofa surfing. Jesus invites others to follow, but they prioritise family protocol and rules. Jesus responds which, with what seems like very harsh critical comments. However, from what I understand, Jesus' responses are typical of a rabbinic way of speaking and preaching, emphasising the situation by comparing options to be very black or very white or very light or very heavy. And he's using stark comparisons as metaphor. What he was outlining in Jewish rabbinic teaching mode was the significance of discipleship. It is not something he wanted someone to be drawn into, only to regret and resent it at a later stage. He wanted to demonstrate that in negotiating life's responsibilities, the relationship with God should be first on our list anyway, before starting to consider anyone else's rules or interpretation thereof. 
and, of course, before our own self-interests. And so, to our service then. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. And so to Psalm 146, verses 1 to 10. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. O my soul, while I live, will I praise the Lord as long as I have any being. I will sing praises to my God. Put not your trust in princes, nor in any human power, for there is no help in them. When their breath goes forth, they return to the earth. On that day, all their thoughts perish. Happy are those who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever, who gives justice to those that suffer wrong and bread to those who hunger. The Lord looses those that are bound. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the stranger in the land. He upholds the orphan and widow. At the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now a reading from Luke. This is chapter 9 verses 51 to the end. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him, because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so now to our intercessions. Spirit of God, 
We remember this morning those who are fearful and anxious, sad and despondent, confused and aimless. All who are finding decision-making hard or fear responsibility. Spirit of God, we bring before you places of violence and places of poverty. Places where logic, humility and kindness are in short supply. Come Holy Spirit, we ask you to bring order out of chaos. Refresh, renew, restore your people. Spirit of God, we bring to prayer those experiencing the dark tunnel of illness and those who are caring for dear ones who are dying. In a moment of silence, we bring forward those we know personally or those we know of, or those who are undergoing traumatic times from which there will be no happy ending. And we pray for all who are ill and those who mourn. May those who have died find rest eternal in God's kingdom. And may those grieving know you are alongside them in their dark hours. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today. O Lord, from whom all good things come, grant to us your humble servants that by your holy inspiration we may think those things that are good and by your merciful guiding may perform the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being with me today. I'll see you again very soon. Take care. Be safe. Bye-bye.